They call them Chopper Squad. An elite team of highly trained pilots, crewmen and paramedics who fly over 500 Mercy missions a year and patrol a 150 kilometre zone around the bustling Auckland metropolis, working to save lives in a relentless race against time in Chopper Squad. Day one of the summer for Rescue One, and the jobs are rolling in for duty crewman John Skiro. Ocean Beach Tyroo for a near drowning. Status one, did you say? And a fair bit serious soon. Get off. A 30-year-old Korean man, Jun Kim, has been pulled from calm seas with a suspected broken neck at the popular seaside town of Tyroo. It's a team of three on each mission. Within minutes, crewman John Skiro. Pilot Steve Couchman and advanced paramedic Chris Deacon are airborne. Right on here. 100. Lance Otis. Clear. Transponder. Compasses. Uh, Slave clear, huh? Sure. Moments after liftoff, Deeks gets word that Jun's condition has changed for the worst. CPR in progress, sir. Uh... Yes. I wonder if, if it's not suitable for a beach landing, whether we can find somewhere else and get Chris transported there. Well, the tide will be out. Oh, it's not all the way out. It's about half a minute. A beach landing is impossible because the tide is coming in. Crewman John Skiro makes the call to get the patient to a safer landing zone. I might uh, see if we can get a phone number and see whether they've been patients able to be moved somewhere where we can pick them up rather than just on the beach. Yeah, even as the nearest car park. Yeah. We're now going to the footy field by the Tyroo ambulance station. So just be aware of those golf boats are still up to speed. Yep, so everything else looks good. Within 30 minutes of call out, the Rescue One crew is touching down in Tyroo. Where is the ambulance? Four o'clock, eh? Yeah. The patient's condition is still unknown. When we found him, he was uh, unconscious and non-breathing. Hey, Chris. Now, did anyone actually see him in the water at all? Or? Because of the language barrier, I haven't been able to establish that. Uh, I think they said he's near 140 or 80. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the uh, last one, 96. Do you have any pain anywhere? Yeah. Where are you sore? In your neck. Your neck is sore. He's normally healthy. Yeah, but can, we, can we understand why he got into this no, situation? No, because apparently he's quite a good swimmer, so we don't want to. So he could have had a cerebral event or something, or maybe he's lost himself on the ground. Paramedic Chris Deacon suspects the patient, Jun Kim, an ex-professional swimmer, has a serious neck injury. We want to leave that on you. And the slightest mistake could leave him paralysed. Mission two for Rescue One. Chief Paramedic Barry Watkin has received a status one call out. Crewman Greg Brownson and pilot Dave Wally finish their final checks ready for departure. A truck has overturned 140 kilometres south in the rugged Karangahaki Gorge. The patient is in a critical condition. With a status one mission, time is of the essence. Right up here. 100. Four. Just a little bit of downwind here, we're going over the boats. Going over the diamond um, is where we sent a truck roll in the uh, vicinity of Waikino. And uh, the police have got there first and reported the patient as status one, which is critical. Yeah, go, you can go right up to it if you're not concerned. The crew are on location 26 minutes after call out. They quickly discover the driver is being slowly crushed underneath the truck. The fellow who's lost control of the truck about three quarters of an hour ago. The truck has failed to take a corner and ended up straddling an unstable ditch. Firefighters from nearby Waihee are working to stop the truck from crushing the man underneath it. 
He's 41-year-old Ken Harris, a father of two from Talpo. Okay. He's been trapped in the cab with a lot of pressure on him and there's fluid leaking over him down there. So uh, he's well trapped until released by the, by the fireys. And that's where all the, the old teamwork come, comes together. At the moment, everyone's doing all the good work. I'm just happy, ready to receive. He's complaining of chest pain and difficulty breathing. Yeah. We have got an oxygen mask on in there and we've just managed to get an 18 in there and that's fine. Well, let's see. Ken has now been trapped for 45 minutes. Medics fear he could go into shock at any time. The local firefighters show incredible bravery, joining Ken under the truck. They're searching for stable ground so the jacks can do their job. The badly injured Ken is conscious throughout. The firefighters reassure him, but everyone knows one slip up will lead to disaster. Advanced paramedic Chris Deacon and the Rescue One crew are treating a patient that may have a serious neck injury. Extra caution is needed to avoid Jun Kim being paralysed. He's got a sore neck, he reckon. That's, that's Did he I tell think. you he had a sore neck? No. Uh, we got, no that was just our theory based on what the bystanders right. said. What we're going to do, we're going to treat him as a C-spine injury. Yep. So just lift all in a straight line level, very slowly, when this gentleman here... Gary, Gary, says so. Okay, Gary. Okay, on three. One, two, three, up. Work, 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 down, down. down you go. The procedure must be executed delicately. What we believe to have happened is the, um, the patient has been swimming quite shallow to the, uh, to the shore and he's uh, obviously seems to have dived down and, and bumped his head on the sand on the bottom and when we were alerted by the public um, that he was down on the beach when we found him he was uh, unconscious and non-breathing. We put a, uh, a collar on him uh, just uh, precautionary in case he has damaged his spine or his back in some way. 40 minutes after call-out, and Jun Kim, a student studying in Auckland, is airborne. You want to set that uh, suction unit up? Yep. Yeah, I'm good. Yep, doing good. OK, checks the whole line. Well, I think what's happened is he's uh, knocked himself out of the dirt on one of those little waves, knocked his head on the ground. He may have some fractures to his C-spine. Did he need CPR? Who knows? But it worked. The only thing uh, that may cause be of it some concern is um, secondary drowning, where he may have some uh, salt water in his lungs. Secondary drowning often results in vomiting. If it happens, Chris will have to make a tough call to move Jean Kim onto his side to clear his air passage and risk further damage to his neck and spine. Every procedure must be done with the utmost care. Right back here, John, at the moment. You are clear out. And those will shut down then, before we unload them. Yep. Can you feel your legs? Yeah. yeah. Do they feel normal or they feel funny? Funny. <laughs> On touchdown, Jean Kim is gently transferred to an ambulance. You got the side, mate? Yeah, yeah, You got it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we'll go down to the ground. He was a 30-year-old male, and he was unconscious for 20 minutes, and then he's got oh, lack of movement in his arms. I think this, this job here is a really good example of the chain of survival, where we've had bystander CPR, then we've had the lifeguards respond, and then the ambulance service, and then us, and then into the hospital. And hopefully he'll go on and make a full recovery. Mission 3. Advanced paramedic Chris Deacon and crew receive a status one call out. Graham Sterling, a 46 year old diabetic, is suffering repeated and life threatening seizures. Problem is, he's 150 kilometres from a hospital, as he holidayed in the swanky seaside resort of Matarangi with his family. 
As they approach the location, a small hiccup for the team. The coordinates logged will put them out at sea. You uh, finished all those coordinates? Yes, sir. It's, uh, it's, uh, looks like it's sort of in the middle here, not actually at... Can you see the map here? It's not even on the far side of the coast here. The crew learn the patient is deteriorating, so quickly turn to local maps for guidance. Might be a bit uh, sceptical about those coordinates. Oh, yeah, a old, bit dodgy, isn't it? At least it's right at the end of the beach. Luckily, pilot Steve is a regular visitor to Matarangi. He takes a guess at the location and is spot on. Oh, there we go. Got him sighted. One o'clock. OK, so we're going to have pines all around us and a few people. So we've got the firemen now. They're going to uh, keep the crowd back, I would imagine. So it's all good. It's like fairly level ground, Steve. Roger. Tail's coming around to face the water now. OK, all right. Clear area. Tail's clear. Main road is well clear. The patient's in a critical condition, but the cause of his fits remain unclear. He needs to be diagnosed and stabilised quickly. Advanced paramedic Chris Deacon is briefed by ambulance staff and has a series of decisions to make. He's an insulin dependent diabetic. Yeah, he's been in history for about the last eight to ten years. Yeah, yeah. And since then, basically, he's fitted four times for a period of up to a minute each time. The holidaying Aucklander has had four seizures in the last two hours. His girlfriend's a nurse, says he's been hypo about regularly, quite recently, about twice a week. So he's obviously not managing it very well. No. So no. Know, no. Is, he? is he into drugs at all? Oh, speak 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 I'll talk to his speak brother. Speak hasn't been elevated. Are you related to him? Or? Graham's mother and son Cameron await news anxiously. Are you the son? Yes, son yeah. What's been happening over the last few months? Yeah. Yes, he has a drink here and there, but has he complained of a headache or anything? No, no, he days? got big mood swing last night and got yeah. quite aggressive and whatever. Yeah. Then he had a big mood swing. Yeah, yeah. He didn't oh, he normal. was taking his insulin. He took one just after tea. Yeah, and, and he did all that. Yeah, he yeah. did all that. Now, is it? No, we're not sure. We're just trying to determine what it is. Yeah. We're not convinced that it's a diabetic thing. It probably is. He's having another seizure. Yeah. It's the fifth seizure. So Chris Deacon has to act now to stabilise Graham. They worry he could slip into a coma caused by his low blood sugar levels. Now, is someone, while he's doing that, is someone looking after his airway? Yeah. Back in Karangahaki Gorge, desperate rescue attempts continue on trapped truckie Ken Harris. Firefighters are risking their lives to get him out, using jacks and a crane so the lift is as smooth as possible. The doctor was saying he's speaking, making good sense, and he's got sensation to his hands, and he's got sensation to the legs and his feet. They've pumped painkillers into Ken, but he's still in tremendous pain with broken limbs. The bone had actually popped out through the skin and gone back in again, so there's, a, there's an oozing wound from that. Well, the leg that's free is quite shattered, so we're starting some pain relief now because it's um, a lot of manipulation to get people out of this sort of situation and, of course, there's a lot of pain. Fire crews finally find solid ground for the jacks. A crane has arrived at the scene and will help with the precision lift. The lift will decide Ken's fate. Just 100 kilometres away in Taupo, his kids are being picked up from school, unaware their dad's life is on the line. Centimetre by centimetre, the jacks are raised. Their calculations and their plan seems to be working. Firefighters remain under the truck without a thought for their own lives. For the first time in an hour, there is hope. What we're going to do now is, because um, of the lack of space, is get a, a little thin plywood backboard that the fireys carry and see if we can get them to get, um, slide them out face first. Watch, 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 watch. Just be careful of wood out here, At last, Ken is out. Yeah, we've got you. He's still in terrible pain, so now it's time for Chief Paramedic Barry Watkin to take over. Put your IV back in. Oh. 
Now paramedics have to keep Ken stable for the 26-minute dash to Auckland Hospital before complications set in. A bit of cold wind there. You feeling cold, Ken? A bit of wind there. The Rescue One crew is on a status one call out to Matarangi, where critically ill Graham Sterling is suffering his fifth seizure. While he's doing that, is someone looking after his airway? Advanced paramedic Chris has now made a quick diagnosis and is stabilising him with an anti convulsion drug. The drug appears to work and the spasms subside. Okay, we'll just let the oxygen flow into him, then we'll press, we don't want to assist. Now they must get Graham to Auckland Hospital as soon as possible. Where are we going now? Can you organise getting that swapped over onto there? One, two, three, left. Graham's son Cameron will accompany his dad on the trip to hospital. Who do you want in the front? The son would be best in the front. Pop up here. Tell me when. You turn that portable off. But before every landing and takeoff, the crew must run through safety procedures. Can you all clear back, please? You good, Chris? All done. Yep. Yeah, I'm all secure. Give me a 10 mil syringe out of that. Uh... Where is the bag? Right up here. Within an hour of the call out, the crew has the patient airborne. Once on board, his condition starts to slip again. The earlier medication failing to fully stabilise Graham. Sorry. The team knows at any moment he could slip into a coma. Go for another one. That's what we wanted. Just getting a blood sugar. He's a known diabetic. But I'm not convinced that his primary problem is. A blood sugar problem. Cheapest creepers. Chris Deacon reacts quickly with more anti-convulsion medication. He now fears another full seizure is on the way. Settle him down. Which could send the patient into a coma. Graham Sterling is a seriously ill diabetic patient en route to Auckland Hospital from the beach at Matarangi. Jeepers, creepers. But there's bad news. He's become increasingly agitated. Settle him down. Treat the things you can treat. It's, uh, got a history of insulin dependent diabetes, so uh, they often have vascular problems. I'd say he's having a a cerebral event, you know, he's having a stroke or something like that. The good thing is he hasn't had any breakfast, so best chance of having a few. Less than 90 minutes after initial call out, the team arrives at Auckland Hospital. Peter. Oh. Are you secure? Uh, yep, we're both good in the front legs. Graham, open your eyes. So close to specialist care, Graham starts slipping in and out of consciousness. Graham. It looks like they've arrived just in time. This morning he had four seizures, I've witnessed yeah. one of them. Can you squeeze my hand here, Graham? It's suspicious he might have aspirated because um, we need to take the O2 off the sat strong. I think the a job has gone well. I'm going to give him a scan of the head and um, I'll pick up any bleeds and you know, he's getting the best possible care, really. And this is where patients need to be, is in the hospital. <laughs> Ninety-three minutes from call-out, and the Rescue One crew and truckie Ken Harris are racing to Waikato Hospital. So, my old soldier, how are you feeling? I think it went a bit dead, sitting under there for a while. Yeah. Oh, you've been 
Just under two hours from call out. Ken is receiving the care he so desperately needs. It's very satisfying for me to see someone come out who's salvageable, not just a terribly damaged person that ain't going to live, you know, like, like we see sometimes. So that's, that's particularly good. <laughs> Luck was on my side that day. From the very first person that turned up to the very last person that turned up, yeah, everything was all on my side. If it wasn't for, for them, yeah, it would be toes up. Yeah, I've seen photos of the, the, the little gap that I came out of and where I was. And the first viewing of them is pretty scary. One of the things that went through my mind when I came to was like, I couldn't feel my legs. When he cut that one free and took my shoe off and started playing with my foot, that was good, you know, not paralyzed. So. Diabetic Graham Sterling suffered four seizures before the Rescue One team arrived. He was in a coma for three days in Auckland's intensive care and left hospital after two weeks. Graham was lucky to survive. Jean Kim suffered a broken neck and bruised spine after he hit his head diving in shallow waves. Two months later, and the news is better. He's walking on crutches, but now faces a long rehabilitation program. The final words rest with truckie Ken Harris. Mm -hmm. Lucky son of a bitch. <laughs>